Κύριε Λέησον, Κύριε Λέησον, Κύριε The culmination of the entire year at St. Catherine's Monastery is the joyous and light-filled celebration of the Resurrection of Christ, the Feast of Feasts and the Festival of Festivals. The Greek word for this is Pascha, but this is known in the West as Easter. And it is one of the many times in which we are reminded that the treasures that we have here are a heritage that has been guarded by the vigilance of the Fathers through the centuries gone by, and that we continue in that heritage because of their labors. And they are the world's inheritance. And we have the responsibility to protect and conserve them, as we have done to this day throughout the ages, for as long as the centuries exist. Of all the icons that survive in the world from Byzantine times, over half of them are at St. Catherine's Monastery. It is very humbling to be surrounded at every service by these glorious and beautiful icons. Standing in the basilica that has stood since the year 550 and chanting the same services and the same hymns, the way of life here is very much the ancient way of life that has been pursued here for many, many centuries. St. Catherine's Monastery, because it was so remote and difficult to reach, and because it was in the middle of the desert, has survived. And so that is why the icons that are here are truly exceptional. I think one of the most distinctive things about the Orthodox churches are the presence of icons. Icons are paintings of the saints, or depictions of the historical events in the life of Christ and the life of the saints. Icons are not simply works of art. They were created in prayer and they find their fulfillment in prayer and in worship. And it is a very beautiful thing to see icons in the services. They seem to come to life with the lights, candles, with the incense, and the lamps that are held, that are lit in front of the icons. And the entire service, both the vestments, the hymns, the icons, it becomes a seamless whole and it is an entering into the scriptural world. At the beginning and the middle and the end of every day, we have the services which form the, the anchor to each day. One could say that prayer is the blossom of the life in Christ, and like a tree, in order to bear fruit, it needs to blossom first. The primary occupation of a monk is prayer. But in order to not live at the expense of others, it is necessary for him to work in the monastery, what we call the akonima, daily tasks. 
One works in the library, one goes down to the church, another works in the garden. That way, each one does what he can. The library here at St. Catherine's Monastery is exceptional in many ways. We have 3,300 manuscripts, and they are written in 11 languages, and the oldest dates from the 4th century. This was a meeting point for pilgrims from all over the Orthodox world to honor the holy place where God revealed himself in a special way to the holy prophet Moses and the holy prophet Elijah. Moses led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. God said, take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. It was at Sinai that God revealed the Ten Commandments. And the second commandment is, Thou shalt not make any graven images. And I've often thought that this is a juxtaposition to have one of the most remarkable collections of icons in the world at the place where God gave the commandment not to make graven images. Today, this place is respected by both Christians and Jews. It is accepted also by the Muslims who recognize it in the Quran as the place where Moses received the Ten Commandments. So this place is recognized and honored by the three largest monotheistic religions. The Bedouins share in the joys of the monks, and for us, the greatest joy is Pascha. The monastery gives them blessings on the other days, and we help them in every way possible. But on this day, we offer them something different, the blessed bread that the monastery bakes, and the eggs the red eggs. The red eggs are symbolically important in that the egg has life within it. The red is for the blood of Christ and the sacrifice made. I have had the joy, I will not say luck, because it was an obvious choice to have been at this monastery since 1961. And so I have been living here for about 45 years since I arrived as a young man. There have been many changes here in that time. In today's world, we have grown more and more involved with ourselves and our material possessions. It is what we now call globalization. I wish that word meant the global rebirth and renewal of the spirit. Unfortunately, it does not seem to. We would be a whole lot happier if it did. This is what we try to do here, to give life to that other meaning. 